Sash and case windows are one of the oldest windows, especially in Scotland. Down in England, you don't get as many. You do get a lot of sash and case windows because it's a bigger, far bigger country. But in proportion to houses in Scotland, the older houses, majority of them had sash and case windows. If you didn't have a sash and case window, you had a different type of window, and it's called a casement window. And that's more like what we get, like your house windows at the moment, where you've got a window that opens like a door or it opens like that. Now they were, they're called casement windows, these are called sashing case. And a sashing case is, think about the name, what we've got is a sash, so a sash is a window, a, a window pane, that's the sash. So this bit here is called the, 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 the sash, and that's the bottom sash, and that's the top sash. Quite easy to work that one out. But, the side bits, if I can get this up, the side bits, this section here, is called the case. So you've got, so the basics of the window is three parts. Bottom sash, top sash, case. Right? And we'll, work, we'll look at the case first. On the case, so basically, before we can start, we've got three parts to the, the basics. Then we can cut that down. The case is made up with different things as well. What we've got is a sill, this is called the sill piece. And the sill piece is angled to let the water fall away from the house. So what you need to have is, you can see it's, if you all have a look at this, the actual, you've got a piece here, it's, it's angled, then it's stepped, then it's angled. You always have to make sure when you're doing anything like this, it's always angling away from the building, not angling into the building, or it's not flat. Because this is the thing that keeps all the water. The water, if you have it, if you don't have it an angle, the water will just lie in it. And a water lying on something, especially wood, no matter how well protected, will rot. Of all the things in the case, when we're replacing stuff, the actual front sill, this part here, that's what this is about, this is the front sill, it's easier to replace. And there is, I know there is a couple of um, front sills at the back that need to get replaced. So we'll be able to do that. We can replace the whole sill, but it is quite a big job and it's a case of taking everything out. On top of that, we've got the capping batten rod, or the top batten rod. The base, and that usually, I don't know if this one is, this is all one piece, and it's all been machined as one piece, but it's usually separate, and it gets nailed in. We don't usually need to take that out, okay? That stays where it is. Then we've got these two bits, either side. And they're called batten rods. Okay, and we'll have one at the top as well, and it's called the top band. And what that does is that gives us a profile, so it's a wee design profile. But it's, as you can see, it's totally round at this bit. So, why do you think it's totally round? What would be the reason for it to be round? Yeah, aesthetics. Aesthetics, it looks nice, doesn't it? It does. There's another reason. Do you know any, any other reason? Actually, so do we want to? No. We want to take this out to get to these. See when we paint them. When the paint goes round there, the paint sits in there. If it was a flat piece, you wouldn't see the joints. So you would have to scrape all the paint off to see where the joint, and you'd have to then get your get this in. And you'd have to go like that. So that's what I do. Right? So we've got that, and we're looking at it. We're taking it off nice and gently, as best we can, because we're trying to get it to so its. This is where my other piece comes in. So what I've used is I've used the thin piece to 
open it up to split it away from the, the window. That one's already got a split in it, so we have to be very careful. Now, there is no guarantee in the world that you can actually get these out without damaging them. We do try the best we can to do it. So there we go, I've popped that, that comes out. Okay? See the old cut nails? Mm. Right, now, see what I, what I say to you about the fact that when you paint it up, see the, see the wee bit of paint yeah. that's built up there? If that had been flat, we would never have seen that. We would never have been able to get that out without damaging it. So we go to the other side, again, I use this to, to get my finger, just to see how easy that is. Oh, that's it, and I'm putting my hammer at an angle and I'm popping it. And I'm pulling it down. Now the other thing you'll notice, I'm going like that. You came on the right side. Because right there's no guarantee that the window is 100% the same side, size either side. But we know they fit. So what we've got is we've popped, we've popped the uh, pattern bead, the band one. So we go back to this. This is the sash up like I've showed you downstairs. It's, it's painted, but that's a pulley, that's a pulley wheel there. So that goes over the top of the pulley wheel, inside the pulley wheel, and comes through. So where does so, that drop down to? I'll show you in a minute. So the top sash, I'll show you now. What we do is we pull that like that, and we go to where the band rod was, that loosens up. Okay? You get the nail. Go up here and go as high up as you can. It's not easy this light. Start the nail. Pull it down where the, the bat rod was. Now, why do you go for where the bat rod is? I think it's better look. Oh, you're not going to see the hole when we put the bat rod back in. But I don't know the silks, I don't drive these nails right in. I just leave them sticking out. Because again, this is only a temporary thing until we get the sash out. It's a two man job, usually, to get the sash out. So I'm going to have a look to see what we've got here. Right, I'm going to have a look to see what we've got here. And more light on the matter. Right. So this one is done differently from from a lot of places. This has got the knob. So, so this one's been knocking. See it? So you undo the knob. Out. And balance on the other side. Let's see if it's done the same way. It's done the same way. Go to the bottom. Try to get this out. They don't make it easy because when they cut the knot. I'm going to be honest with you, it's not very usual that you put the knots in them. I tend to just put the nails in them, which is as good a way as any. There you go. Right, so we take the sash out, put it over the side, out the road. Now, so what we've got is, that's has got, they're sitting on the road, that, we want to get into the weights. To get into the weights, we come across this middle section, and that middle section is called a parting bead. Not parting, a 
partin, P A R T I N, partin. Don't ask me why, I don't know why it's called that. What we want to do again is just loosen off the pain. That's it. See how it popped? So, we're having to take that out. Like that. And because there's a blind there as well, I said. So, that's your part of So, again, you can see that bit there slots in there. Okay? It's quite a bit thinner than our batting rods. So. It is. Yeah, so. it's your, that's a, you get two sizes. You get three sizes, but two normal sizes. It's an old money, it's called half inch and 58. And new money, it's 12 mil and 15 to 16 mil. That's your 58. Well, that's actually a bit thicker than that. That's like 17 mil, that, probably 18 mil. But usually that's where they are. Is that a piece that's probably quite easy to get damaged in the... That's like, it, on the removal. Uh -huh. On the removal, I would expect one out of every three or four well, to get damaged. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Guess because it's, it's that wedged. It's, 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 it's painted up. Look where you can see. Top, say, there's your top sash. Hardly mm -hmm. any paint on that at all. And there's your ball. Ah, yeah. See the paint stuck to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's... And it's the paint that holds everything. It's like go it can be like glue. Yeah. Right. But you can see what I'm saying is the, the parting bead, the batting rod, they're not very well fixed. It's not like they're mechanically fixed. It's got a couple of nails in it. Sometimes this has got a couple of nails in it. We might have to put a couple of nails in it. It just depends on how it goes. And again, if you get it out without damaging it, you want to. Do you know what I mean? In terms of you maybe getting called out to a job uh, for fixing a window, what are the most common things sash to go wrong? Uh, the sash cord the is sash the most These bits. The most these common. bits are the most common bits in a sash and case window because these are the things that stretch, people put paint, right, yeah. um, they're frayed. Um, you can actually, you know, that's thinner than that. Mm. If you have a look at that there. It's that, that bit there is thinner than that bit because it's been stretched. Um, and that's the, but that's the most common reason. And it's usually because and it's when I say it's the most common thing, it's not it's, it's not like um, to get to, to do the repairs to these windows is the same. You have to strip everything out to get them. Now Remember, so what we've got is we've got the top sash done, but it's painted shut. See it? And what you have to do is... See that? Mm -hmm. We could not have done that without taking these out. Mm -hmm. There's no way we would have got that window moving. Now this is going to be the job we've got. We've got to get these windows moving up and down. Biggest problem you've got with a sash in case of windows, the painter. Always the painter. The painter, but you see, when I take this window out your wall, you can start seeing up there. I've not even got the window out, you can see what the problem is. See it? Mm -hmm. they've, not the, they've not done us any favours doing that. So, again, process is the same. What we want to try and do is get the window right. This is quite a tight window. You can see that. See how frayed that is? Mm -hmm. So we will be changing them at some time if not today. Because there's no point. We would only replace the sash core properly mm -hmm. once we've I will change the sash core, but I won't attach it to the window yep. because we've got to work on these windows later. So see, like uh, I should say, the painter's not done us any favours. When we come to doing paint work and things on this, is it best to paint it while it's all disassembled, yes. let it dry, and then, then put, put it together? So we're not got this right. issue. You could do the undercoat right down and then do the gloss. Yep. But when you do the gloss, what you want to do is you want to run the window up and down a couple of times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, but what happens is on this project, there's enough windows to do that. Aye. 
in a normal situation where there's just one window, window. two windows, a painter's not going to wait to the, between the coats to, to make sure that the window's running up and down. Yes, uh -huh. So uh -huh. I'm not blaming, uh -huh. I'm blaming the painter, but I'm not blaming, blaming uh -huh. the painter. That makes any sense. So again, I get my nail, I just go up as far as I can at the moment. The sashing case window, as I said, we've done the sashing case, that's your top sash, that's your top sash. We've done the basics of the case, that's it. So, these bits are going to hit, are called the pulley styles. They're called the pulley styles because though these are painted in, okay, there's pulleys, the pulley wheels up here. Okay? And they're recessed into the timber, screwed in, and that gives a, a, it's basically a wheel. And that gives the wheel turns, and that means that there's no uh, resistance for the window to go up and down with a rope. So inside, so that's the components for a case or a box is the sills, the pulley styles, the pulley head, or the case head up there, and then what we've got here. See this bit here? Mm -hmm. That goes all the way flush with this section here, with this section here, and that's called the inside facing. And that's flush, so when we put the barn rod on that, you don't see any joint. Okay? On the outside, see that there? See how that's sticking past? Sticking past. That's what the window hits against and prevents the window going right outside. So if we, if, we, if we didn't have that, the window would just go poof. So that's called the outside facing. And it's got a second function. The section, second function is it goes against the stone work here and lets us have something to seal the window to the stone. And that prevents the water getting in past the window so if the, if the damage got in this, what it would do is just go down the bottom and it would cause real problems downstairs. In an old building, there are a couple of things that happen to old buildings. Um, you'll have seen it in this here, in this job here especially. When water gets inside the building, it causes mayhem. It can cause dry rot, wet rot, dampness and everything like that. Usually, the three areas that that happens with is your roof, obviously, the gutters and downpipes, where the water's coming off the roof, on the gutters, and then down the downpipes, and it's hitting the stonework. And what happens is if the stonework gets saturated, and the water's saturated, stone's porous, and what happens is it actually pulls the dampness into the building. Right? And these, these builds where, though, the, though the wall's that wide, it's not, they're actually about that wide because there's a laughing plaster there and that is all the stonework on the outside is just basically a facade just facing the stones so they're about that thick all the way up and then we put then they built an internal wall random i don't know if there's any areas that have got that random uh, along the line of the... here we go come here and sit so remember, it looks, see the random walls? Yeah. Right? Okay? Where all that outside is the lovely face stonework. Willie will explain it better than I can, but that's basically that's it. And what happens is inside that, they had a cavity and they just filled it with random stones. So it's like loose stones that goes in there, fills that up. And the, what the reason it's loose is when the dampness comes in that way, the idea of it is because it's all loose, there's nothing for the dampness to carry on through and it's meant to just drop right through. But if the stonework is saturated, if there's that much water coming in, it will come in and it will go in and it will come down and it will affect the rest of the building. And it's the same with the windows. If you don't seal the windows on the outside, you'll get the, wind, you'll get the weather coming in and it will cause dampness. And the idea of a window, no matter how you look at it, is to give light but prevent dampness. So what we're doing is we're putting a protection, we're, we're creating an opening to stop the cold and the, the water, okay? 
So there's no point. So that's why they give you an outside facing that you can actually see. Again, see, like if you look down there, you'll see it. If you look over, put your head in. You can see jump done. You can see you can put your head right out. You know, before it. Mm -hmm. See it between the stonework and the, mm -hmm. the wood. You put your finger down, and you can feel finger around. Ah, okay. It's a seal. Would uh, that be mastic or would that be it something be different tradition? This should all stone mastic. Yep. A lot of people use silicon. It's a modern product. It does all right, but the problem with silicon is you can't paint. So once you put silicon on, you can you can put over paint it, but the paint won't stick and it does look a bit yucky. But if you do nice stone stone mastic or a trowel, yep. it'll, it'll it'll be a nice neat job. Okay? So we've done that, we've got the basics of your inside facing, outside facing, we've had a baton rod, we've had a part and bead, we've got a silk piece, we've got a head, we've got the pulleys, boot pulley style. But then we have to get into the into the weights. Let's try to get this off. Which is one. This one is one. Don't make this up. That's it. So did you all know that was there? Oh yeah. There's one on the other side. See it? Right. So that's it there. A nice snug bit of wood that. Okay. Snug bit. I don't know how they did. They must have made them up. Separate from the actual window, right? Okay. Okay. So what we've done here, this is called the pocket. Okay. And that's your pocket hole. Okay. So. I'll go to do this one first. I take the nail out and take um you notice I'm holding the weight. Oh, it, it, it can fall, but it, it's pretty messy when it does. That's not a nice thing to see. So can you access both uh, top car sash weights yes, and bottoms from, pocket, from yes. that one pocket? So there we go, there's the weight. It's got a big weight. A big chunky I've lead. never seen a weight like this in my life. No, nope, that is, this is not a normal weight. I've never seen that. I mean, why is it hinged like that? We've got quite a few of them in the laundry as well. Hinged yeah. like this? Mm -hmm, mm hmm The reason you're hinged like this is normally, if I turn it that way, but it's not hinged. You have to feed that up through there, and sometimes the weight is longer than the pocket. So you're having to angle it and feed it up with this. You can just go like that. It's impossible. So, uh, I, though I have, I, I have seen pictures of them, but I've never actually handled them before. Well, that's, 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 and you've been doing this 30 years. Uh, mm -hmm. or, uh, uh, so I've, seen that... other ones, I've seen other ones where what we do is we join them. Mm -hmm. We've got like bolts so we can bolt them together. And what we, have to, what we sometimes have to do is unbolt them. them and take them out to get to the weights. So we put that one there, because that's the bottom sash. Right? Now, there's a, a divider here. Yeah. So that's, that stops the wind, that's meant to stop the, the, the weights clashing. Normally we use cast weights, that's a cast weight, and they're usually 50 mil diameter. And because of the box, and this is why it's called the box ash, by the way. You'll see it now because inside this bit it's a box. Is, a, is a box. Right? Um, right, oh, that's, that's a great thing to see. Really good, right? This lets me talk about the next thing I was going to talk about. Right? Serendipitous. Ah, right. So, the weights, what's the purpose of the weights? To hold the window. To get the window sitting right, what we have to do is, we have to weigh, normally, I haven't got it with me, I have got scales, and the luggage scales, you know like, your mum, you, what you, 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 you use, hold on, hang on, boom. I use them, tie it on, lift it up, and it gives me, a, it gives me the weights, okay, and what we do is, 
you want them to the weights to counterbalance the size of your sashes, your weights of sashes. So, to make the bottom, the purpose of the bottom sash is to go up, right? And the purpose of the top sash is to come down. We'll concentrate on the top sash first. If the top sash weights, so if you say, if you weigh, if you weigh the top sash and it's 20 kilograms, you split that and you say the weights need to be 10 kilograms either side to balance the window. If you weigh 8 kilograms one side, 12 kilograms the other side, what you do is when you put the window up, the window would go like that. So you want to have them close to the same size either side. Then you have to think about, you have, then you have to think about it. If I get it slightly wrong, and the top sash is 20 kilos, and by the time I put all the weights, and I've gone through all this rigmarole taking the weights off, and when we put the weights on, you'll see the rigmarole we have to do to put the weights back in. If I put that up, and the weight is actually a bit too light, just by half a kilogram, there's a chance that that window, top sash, with gravity, will just fall down. And if that's the case, you have to go through the whole thing again. So what we tend to do is add an extra bit of weight onto the weights. Because if there's extra weight, extra weight there, it's pushing it down and it's keeping it up in place. Mm -hmm. And because it's only slight difference, because of the purpose of this outside facing and the parting bead, when you pull it down, it will stay where it is. Now, if it's far too heavy, you'll pull it down and it'll just go back up. So you're just wanting it to be slightly wide bigger. So what they've done is they've added that. I guess a light weight. That's a light weight with a hole in it. And see you feel the difference? That's not that, but for the size of it, yeah, it makes a difference. So if you I'm not saying there is one on that side, but the chances are there's going to be one on that side as well. So what that, that what they've actually done is they've adjusted the weight of this to suit the bigger window. So they're making sure that the weights are heavier on the, the top sash to keep the top sash down. Which means, in theory, you want to keep the weights lighter for the other ones. So that, you know, it makes it easier to to go up because if you make it if you make the you know they want to go heavier as well sorry so when you pull it up you just catch it but the top the bottom sash is never an, an issue because the bottom sash is we can adjust the batten rod to suit to make sure the window's working right okay but the weights that's what the weights are there for is to balance the window okay so we've got those ones in i'll just keep that one there and put that on top so you can see that says 17 on it, and that means 17 pound, because they wouldn't have had kilograms in those days. So that means that tells me that that window is a 34 pound window. Without. And it's nice when the old sashes actually tell you what, sorry, the old weights tell you what weight they are, because that means if you have to go and get replacement weights, you can go and get replacement weights. When we're taking these windows out. What we're creating is an aperture or an opening. And two things can happen when you do that. One, debris can fall out. So always, always make sure what's below. And I'm looking at that and there's absolutely nobody going to be walking below the ring. If there is a chance that somebody's walking, you might have to go down and barrier that area off, right? So that nothing falls on top of anybody. That's pretty thing. Second thing is, Look at the height arm. So if I overstretch, <laughs> there's nothing to stop me fall. So what, I, what we have to do is very careful. And what I tend to do, and I'm only not doing it for this because of demonstration purposes, I usually get a piece of wood or a, or a bit of plywood and I cut it to that size and I put it across there. And what that gives me is that gives me a barrier. It stops me going that way. So, because I'll have to get up on a pair of steps to get up there. So what I might have to do is go and get a wee piece of wood just to put that across there to stop, when I've got a pair of steps, to stop me falling out. So you would have to, remember what I said, 
when we're doing the doors, you have to process of risk assessment. You have to think what could happen if I'm working on a window three stories up, a lot of pedestrians walking below, what do we do? You would, I would have to follow risk assessment out for that. Right? So I have to follow risk assessment for most jobs. Right? Uh, but that one's running nice. You get the mouse and you just slip the mouse in. And you try to keep it the straight. There we go. So. Goodness, that's eight here. That's <laughs> <laughs> See how tight that is. Aye, aye. So I'm trying to get the wee wedge out. Just take it up. Get my position to stand and I move the world. Now, this is where we have to worry. We hope, and it is a hope, that that will keep through. Right. It does. Mm. I know it's just taken up. Like that. Just a granny knot. Just a granny knot. Doesn't need to be a slip knot or anything like that. Right, I'm taking the excess off. Take the excess off, but I don't want anything to fill the, the weight when it goes up and down. We've got a, a thing from here to here, okay? So we want the rope to go about there. So we measure that there, okay? And that's about three, see about 310, 300. From there, we can work that out where that is. Right. So that top of that sash will be the top of that. So that's it there. So it's where the paint line stops so i'm going to measure down 300 there and i'm going to measure down 300 from the paint line there right. okay now <clears throat> i'll feed this uh, i'll feed this weight back in Now, remember what, how a sash and case window works. It's a counter balance. So when this window's down, where's that weight? It's a counter, it's the opposite. So when that window's down, it goes up. So what we do is we pull that up, and you'll hear it hitting the pulley. Hear it hitting the pulley? Now, what we could do at that point is mark that there on the light bumble. But that, but what happens is that might bottom out, what we call, or hit out. So the, the, the pulley itself will stop the way it's going up. So what we do is put it there, 
and bring it down a wee bit. Then mark it. Okay? And then I can get my nail kick. Somebody pass my hammer up to me, please. I'll just put that back, back up as far as it can go. Put that in there. Okay. Hold it there. That's my mark there. Because we want it to go back up, 